Yeah. All right, we're going to go straight to questions. We're going to open up front row, middle. Dave? Ryan, last year Michigan's defense seemed to be in man coverage almost 100% of the time. This year they seem to be mixing up a little bit more. Can you just uh, speak on what differences you've seen from them schematically on defense this year? Yeah, they've um, you know they've gone to a lot more zone, and uh, but they mix it up. And uh, you know, Coach Brown does a great job of that. He's always had uh, you know a lot of different coverages and a lot of different looks, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of them on Saturday. Uh, front row right, Austin. Ryan, uh, when Justin went down late in the fourth quarter. I saw him, he bounced back up, but what kind of conversation was that? Did your partner throw it a little bit? Take me through that process there. Yeah, no, for sure. Anytime you see that you're, you're starting quarterback on the ground, it's not a good feeling, but uh, and he's able to shake it off and, and kind of run off the field. And uh, So yeah, we expect him to be fine. With that volume of carries, is that just a, this, when you get in those big games, you'll pull nothing back? Is it too many for him, do you think? When you watch the film, what did you think of that, that amount of rushing attempts? Yeah, no, I thought... Um, you know, when we play in big games like that, you know, we certainly, you know, rely on him to run some, you know, and, and uh, it's not typically uh, quarterback design runs, although we have some of those. A lot of them, we're reading somebody, and based on what he does, um, you know, he can either keep it or run it. And then some of those are, are scrambles, you know, when you look at his numbers. Um, he does a great job extending plays, but, you know, Penn State kind of forced him to run the ball a little bit, and, and he did a great job on the, the, the two turnovers. I thought he was unbelievable. Um, and so, you know, we'll continue to do that when we think it's appropriate. Second row middle, Steve. Yeah, Coach, just uh, curious, you coached under uh, Coach Meyer for two years with his schedule of this week and how to handle it. Are you tweaking anything? What does Thanksgiving look like? Senior tackle, do you guys still do that? Just how does this week, day by day, break out? Yeah, just because of, uh, like you said, the holiday. Uh, we, we keep Tuesday, Wednesday pretty pretty similar. Uh, we have our, our family dinner Wednesday night, and then we get in here early. You know, coaches work late Wednesday night. We get in here early and, and practice Thursday. And then uh, you know, we do our senior tackle and then let everybody get home for Thanksgiving. And then go right back at it Friday. So uh, pretty similar to, to what we've done in the past. Uh, right next door, Bruce. Growing up in New England, what was the rivalry that you as a kid and, you know, liking football over some of the rivalries or the rivalry you focused on? Uh, yeah, growing up it was it was mostly the, the pro sports because that's where I was from, the Boston area. And, um, you know, it was Red Sox, Yankees, it was Celtics, Lakers. Uh, the Patriots really didn't have too many rivals at that point, but um, you know, that was kind of it. But certainly growing up, that was kind of your identity. It was that, and uh, definitely with the Red Sox. You know, everybody time, every time somebody wears a, a Red Sox hat back home, that's, you know, who you are. And, Certainly, you can, can relate that to everybody who grew up in, in the state of Ohio and when they put the block O on. There's been a shift in this rivalry toward the Ohio State side since <clears throat> Russell was the coach here. He largely got it done with Ohio guys. When you're bringing guys in from out of state, how do you get them to understand the, the priority that this rivalry is to the school? Uh, in recruiting, we, we talked to them right from the get go, and that's one of the reasons why you know some people come to school here is for the rivalry because. We make such a big deal of it, as you guys know, when you walk in the building, it's all over the place. And we talk about it all the time, and we talk about it in recruiting in all different areas, whether it's strength and conditioning or football or, or any other uh, areas. And so, um, you know, we just it's something that you just ingrain. And then the more, you know, these guys are in the program, the more they get it. And we still have a huge, uh, you know, majority of our guys are from the area. So, you know, they, they get it, and they talk to the guys about that. Uh, second row right, Kyle? The big matchup in this game the last few years has been your offense and Don Brown's defense. And you guys coached together at Boston College for a few years. Just curious how close you guys got there and how it's been someone you stayed in touch with at all? Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, he actually uh, coached against uh, me when I played and then um, coached my brother at UMass. And then we coached together at Boston College and then and now get an opportunity to coach against each other in a, a huge rivalry game, which makes it hard. but. Uh, nothing but respect, for obviously, for his background and what he's done defensively uh, over the years. You know, one of the best guys in the business. Then, growing up in New England, I mean, do you have memories of this game at all? Anything in particular you remember growing up about the high school? Not nah, just that you know it was always on this weekend, and um, you know it was the most heated rivalries. I just remember watching it. And I remember being in a hotel room watching when Curtis Samuel, you know. Uh, you know, scored double overtime. I mean, just so many memories of what this game means. And, uh, you know, it's no mystery throughout the country that it's the biggest rivalry in all sports. Fourth row middle, Patrick. <coughs> Bruce asked you about integrating players and kind of following up on Kyle. How did you get into it when you first arrived here? 
to what this meant being that you, know, you grew up watching it, but it's it's different. Yeah, yeah, no, I think uh, you know for the first uh, I don't know six months, you know, my my son and I when we came in the building together, we'd sit there in the front atrium and we'd watch that video um, of, the, of the season before. And, you know, just just as, as you get here, you start to live it every day and you understand it. And, you know, Coach Meyer certainly, uh, you know, talked about it all the time and, and uh, you know, learned that way. And, and then being in the game twice, you know, and, and, and the respect that I have, uh, you know, for the rivalries off the charts, it's just uh, one of the reasons and, and, you know, makes it so special to be at Ohio State. Uh, third, third row, right, Rob? Uh, there's a lot of reasons this has been lopsided since early 2000s, but is there a secret sauce uh, that's involved in this? And what, what did you learn from Urban? You, you mentioned it just a second ago. What specifically, if anything, and how to handle this? Again, I, if, you, if you're working on it all year, uh, then, then you're prepared, you know, whether you've You've worked on it in the spring. You've worked on it in the preseason. You have certain periods that you set aside uh, just to work on on the team up north. Um, you talk to your guys all the time about what it means, and so they understand coming into the game what to expect. It's always on the schedule that way. You know, we have the countdown in, in the building, and so I think everybody understands the importance of it. That's the first thing. Uh, you know, I think you're just talking about the game itself. It just goes back to you know the fundamentals and take care of the football, execute the game plan, give them a good plan that they can execute. And, you know, being on the road is a little different than being home. You know, we're going to have to handle that and being loud and uh, the crowd noise and everything else. So, so we'll handle that today and make sure we pipe in the crowd noise during practice and, um, you know, show composure there. Um, but it's just going to come down to, you know, win the one-on-one -on -one battles in the end. Now I'm going to get your reaction on this. There's several surveys out there, Buckeye Nation. 40% uh, would, given a choice, would rather uh, beat Michigan and lose in the playoffs than win a national title in the division. Does that surprise you at all? What's that speak to the intensity? Oh, I don't know. I, I just know we're, we're focused on this game. And I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people do a lot of what-if scenarios and everything, and I just, I know that this game means everything to us. And, uh, you know, nothing matters if we don't win this game, so we got to win the game. And that's, that's the only way I look at it. Front row left. Nathan? Uh, just what stands out to you about Michigan's offense and how have you seen it sort of develop and progress over the course of the season. Yeah, I thought that you know, since the halftime of the Penn State game, they've really uh, played good football. And, uh, you know, Patterson's throwing the ball well. The receivers are good. Collins, Peoples-Jones, uh, I think their, their tight ends are good. The offensive line, they're a really good job against Notre Dame. And, you know, they got a good scheme. They had a lot of good coaches there. So, you know, they kind of found a rhythm in the second half of the season here. And so it'll probably be our biggest challenge again. You know, as, we, as we've gone on the season, I think we've been challenged more and more. And this will, this will be the most talented group we've seen by far. The way that they sort of move people around, you know, motion, misdirection, things like that, is that something that could potentially negate Chase Young? And how do you see your, your defense having to kind of respond to that? Uh, I mean, they're, they're sound and they do a good job. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to players. And, uh, and I don't think they're going to do anything that's, uh, you know, going to be uh, anything that we probably haven't seen. But maybe they will. Uh, but, I, but I think at the end of the day, it's going to come down to execution and, and guys winning their one-on-one -on -one battles. Second row left, Ari. Hey, Ryan, when you... Last year, you guys had a, a huge recruiting battle head-to-head -head in, with somebody in this state with uh, Harrison. But over the course of the past seven years, it doesn't seem like you butted heads with Michigan at all um, on the recruiting trail, whether it's in this state or not. Are you ever surprised by how little of a presence they have in Ohio on the recruiting trail based on just the fact that they've won a lot of games and have traditionally done that? Well, we, uh, we take a lot of pride in, in recruiting the state of Ohio, and then, you know, we put – we put their recruiting list on, on the board and compare our guys to theirs you know, just about every day, every week, and that's something that Mark looks at every day. And, and that, again, we, we, that's part of how, how you live this rival is you compare yourselves every day against them. And, um, you know, we, again, we take a lot of pride in the fact that we recruit Ohio at a high level and uh, we're very competitive. Um, but, you know, they do a good job too. They, they, you know, they have good recruiters and, and um, obviously a wonderful program. So it's, it's always a big challenge, and that's why we go at it every day. My next question was about how the – recruiting board that or their recruiting board is on your wall what can you learn from that um, how long has that been going on and as the head coach of this program I'm assuming you've had to transition into the role of understanding what the entire strategy is and, and being in charge of that what do you learn from it uh, I mean yeah it, it's been there since I got here and um, it just gives you some awareness of where we're at um, and 
the battles, like you said, that we're in against certain guys, and uh, you know, we rank our people, and and we just want to always know exactly, you know, who those guys are because we know we're going to be playing them, and and that's what's important, you know, in recruiting. Sometimes you don't worry about the guys you don't get; you worry about the guys you do get. But when you're playing, uh, or when, when you're going up against a team up north, you know you're going to be playing against them, so it does matter who you don't get. And so we just look at that very carefully. Do you ever make decisions in recruiting based on what's on their board? <clears throat> um, it influences us, sure. Right next door, Bill. Ryan.